Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Bottom Right Hand Corner. We have Crossy starting as the Blue Zerg Bottom Left Hand Corner. We have Jayun starting as the White Protoss. This is on Polypoid, and this is part of the BSL Season 13 announcement tour. I do have the camera back up again. Uh, let me know. Basically, it was like a split decision as to whether people wanted the camera or not. And so I figured I would do this, upload it to announce that, be a, upload it before the end of the NA team battles. So you guys know that BSL Season 13 is coming and see if I can get a second opinion, because some people are emphatic, like, keep it. Other people are like, no, get rid of it. And it seemed like it was, like, directly split. So, again, need feedback. But BSL Season 13 is here. Uh, I'm not sure how this commentary is going to go. One, because I just got my booster shot yesterday, so yay! But that means I am feeling not exactly 100% under the weather, but a little bit off, per usual. I've got other busy things happening in the background. Also, there might be a little bit of background noise, as my significant other is taking a month off of work to go ahead and rest in the midst of all of this chaos and for other reasons I won't get into. Um, and so if there's weird background noise or if there's other background noise that you hear in the next series of casts, just know that that's going on. And I think that's all the general announcements of stuff going into BSL 13 that I can think of. Looks like we are seeing, was this an overpool opening while I was doing all that talking? It looks like we're seeing a, nope, we are seeing a nine pool opening, technically 10 pool-ish because we have that extractor trick to get a, additional minerals. There is a forge first here for Jayun, so he potentially can get that cannon down to negate the Zerklings. He does need the scout, however, and I like what he did here. He moved the, you can see he moved that probe up, looked for the overlord, and when he didn't find the overlord, he went ahead and decided to move his probe back to the bottom right to get potentially an earlier scout off, and he is gonna get the earlier scout off, and it is huge that he's able to see the spawning pool. So overlord spawns, should see, yeah, this, the six Zerglings being created. And here's the thing. These aren't just Zerglings. These are Crossy Zerglings. And Crossy Zerglings, it's, it almost feels like they have speed when they don't have speed, if you've seen him play. Jayun, keeping this probe, wants to try to blockade those Zerglings as long as possible. He is dropping two cannons to respect that threat and wants to go ahead and try to blockade this natural expansion as long as possible while keeping this probe scout alive. Looks like he's not quite able to stop it on, I think I was on the third deposit. One zergling splitting off to go ahead and deal with this probe. The, the rest of the five zerglings making their way towards the front. The cannons are going to be there in plenty of time and Jayun now setting up to go ahead and get the rest of the expansion. Pretty standard Protoss versus Zerg stuff otherwise in this opener. As far as who to favor, every time we've seen this matchup actually, by the way, I believe Jayun was filling in for, I forget who he was filling in for. Was it Whip? He was filling in for someone in this ladder tour. Check out all the details on Team Liquid. I should have, hopefully I'll remember to put everything in that description. Jayun once again moving up towards that third expansion, trying to interrupt that, the Zergling alongside. He was able to delay it a little while, but with that Zergling applying additional pressure, really not able to blockade that for an incredible amount of time. So Crossy mostly getting the rest of the build the way he wants to. The rest of the Zerglings flooding out, wants to try to deny that probe scout. Specifically wants to go ahead and deny information as far as when that gas is taken, whether there's a second gas taken, it looks like that probe. This is what I'm talking about, Crossy. You can see a Jayun immediately, he needs that scout, so he's gonna go ahead and split off another probe. This tends to be the difference in early game. And I think that's one thing that like the really good Protoss players miss. <clears throat> and I'm gonna say that Jayun fits into the really good Protoss uh, versus Zerg, because he just knows this matchup because of the amount of, pro the amount of Zerg he's played versus Protoss and whatnot. But you can see it looks like he has managed to sneak around those Zerglings. And he has managed to get this probe towards that natural expansion. So first of all, he's going to see that there's a lack uh, of gas right there. Now he's going to walk in. And this is kind of the other critical thing. This is the layer. But let's see if Crossy decides to do, this is kind of a trick he's done before, is once he's collected enough gas, oftentimes, yeah, he spawns the layer at a separate location to try to deny that additional information. But the fact that Jane does not see a Hydralis den is going to be a big indicator to him that he should very carefully go ahead and get that Stargate down and expect some sort of airplay. It is possible that Crossy's going to go for three hatch muta. More likely though, what he's going to do is he's probably gonna fold back towards more of that uh, four hatch play, which he favors a lot. He's had a lot of success against all sorts of Protoss we, see, we saw in the NA team battles with this, mostly because it provides a lot of flexibility where you can kind of switch back to the mutalisks you can go ahead and flood a bunch of zerglings you can get hydralisk contains you can get the, basically a lot of flexibility in the mid game to try to contain your protoss opponent and make sure that they can't inflict a lot of damage you can roll it back to that five hatch hydra play if the mutalisks end up being ineffective here the stargate is plopping down kind of like the flexibility overall that it provides actually this build in particular because you can go ahead and get the spire if you want 
or you can just plop down two additional hatcheries and move to Lurker. Right now, Crossy a little bit delayed, and it looks like he's just going to go ahead and get a fourth hatchery before even bothering with the Spire, since that was scouted. This is an interesting play, and I like Crossy doing that because he's like, okay, Jayun scouted me. I know that he's going to be prepared for Mutalisks, so let me just skip that all together, get my Hydral Sten, get my fourth hatchery, and go ahead and move to Lurker in the mid-game and not even waste money. A Zealot has managed to sneak out the top away from these Zerglings. So great adjustment play there from Crossy. The Zerglings still kind of checking out that front door. Is there a probe blockaded? I think there's a probe trapped back here. I don't know if that was intentional or not. Citadel of Doom plopping down. And, ba and actually this accelerates that build a little bit because that's gas saved where he can get Lurkers up a little bit faster. The one critical thing though is there's going to be this window where you have these Corsairs. Let me go ahead and... Oops, didn't mean to do that. I know the key, though. I think it's down. Yes, to get the speed back to normal, so I don't need to do the restart because I'm, like, hunting for the hotkey and bringing up the side panels. Anyway, <clears throat> Corsair is going to be able to move up, and actually, let's see if it finds any overlords. I was going to say, they might be able to get a couple overlord kills without a lot of hydralisks underneath. But Jayun moving up with the zealots that apparently I was just missing, they're going to get on top of that initial hydralisk. It's only one. The zerglings pushing up to try to deal with that zealot in the meantime. That Corsair is free firing into the Overlord's overhead, and this is going to certainly sh slow down Crossy's economy. He's going to need to get additional units out to deal with these zealots. A nice micro by Jayun, again harassing these Hydralisks, allowing and that's going to cap him in the red. Fortunately for Crossy, he did get additional Hydralisks out. These zealots are going to forfeit their lives, but you can see, and let's see if he can get actually additional Overlord kills. It looks like he is going to just stick with a single Corsair. Needs to keep it alive because needs to provide that additional scouting, but was able to get accomplished what he wanted to get accomplished. Forced a bunch of Hydralisks to be produced. Put Crossy in the red. I like that Crossy's going to go ahead and grab uh, some tech upgrades in the interim because he's like, okay, well, can't build units. Let me go ahead and push tech. Second Corsair has been created. Looks like the Hydralisks are going to push to that front door. They're going to be able to catch that Corsair in transition. But the Corsair, I think, actually did a good job forfeiting its life there. This is one problem and this timing, this is where I've seen Jayun lose this match before, is with a counterattack of a bunch of Hydralisks on the front door. And it looks like the Hydralisks are actually able to get on that first cannon. The Zealot trying to push this back, and Jayun just doesn't have the units to deal with this right now. So Crossy finding the opportunity, pushing up probes off the line. Looks like they are going to save that forge. Weapons 1 should come online. The Corsair actually moving its way back, trying to distract the Hydralisks. Not able to do so. A second cannon is going to warp in. But are there going to be enough Zealots? Looks like High Templar being built. Psy Storm, I don't think, is upgraded just yet. Level 1 weapons does finish, but if Crossy brings more Hydralisks, which he is bringing, no Dark Templar are being fielded, and it looks like Crossy probably easily going to be able to take Game 1. As the Gateway being slammed, Corsair moving out trying to get something accomplished. But Crossy, yeah, just pulling that switch, very decisive, and it looks like, yeah, just going to be able to walk in, wipe out the rest of the cannons. The, the probes once again pulling off the line. The Hydralisk going ahead and backing off, picking away at the probes here. High Templar right there. They're at risk of getting picked off as well. And there's GG from Jayun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Game one of this set. If you want to check out the actual ladder, um, go to the Team Liquid thread and you can go ahead and see what was there. I'm going to take the camera off again. In the meantime, uh, but let me know if you like it and if it's helpful or not, uh, or distracting. I could see where it would be distracting. I'm like half and half on it. Part of it is, is like I can draw more people in to the glorious world that is Rudor with the camera. The other half of me is like, I like my anonymity and I don't like, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Still got a lot of love. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.